we are back and ladies and gentlemen welcome back to the marijuologist this is the show that explores the social economic political medical impact of cannabis on la on california and the entire globe once again reaching out to the four corners of the globe uh i am your host richard carr joined each and every week but not just yet by my esteemed colleague the inquisitive mendel like professor ness who is on his way to the studio in haste to bring you his weekly segment called Marowology 101. We've got a great show ahead as always. Each and every week we we just come better and better. I just got to tell you there only been a few weeks since August 1st of 2009 when we first started our very very first broadcast of the Marowologist. Uh, there's only been a few weeks man that we've missed we've been broadcasting each and every week meant both medical and otherwise so we've been working really hard to bring you the the most truth the most clarity the most intelligent minds to the mic to our global forum to discuss this whole concept of cannabis medicinal adult recreational use and as we've expanded our perspectives we've also begun to look at and analyze the whole drug war as a whole in this country and what a big tremendous failure it has been to that end we are going to be having yet another member of law enforcement against prohibition that's l-e-a-p leap dot c-c that's their website miss diane goldstein will be joining us at the bottom of the hour she is a retired lieutenant commander of the redondo beach police department from santa Ana, california here's a quote from her Prohibition is unwise fiscal policy. Education and treatment would be far more effective. Direct from Miss Diane Goldstein, who's going to be joining us once again. First lady of LEAP that we've had on the Marijologist. So I'm very excited to talk to her, talk with her offline before the show. And we have some very interesting conversation about what she's seeing as an epidemic in our country, even amongst good kids. It's very, very very interesting stuff. So you want to stay tuned for that. Miss Diane Goldstein, proud member of Law Enforcement Against Prohibition. Big ups to all of the esteemed ladies and gentlemen of LEAP who've joined us in the past and hopefully who will join us in the future. Also on today's show, live in the studio with us, we've got Mr. Casey Cassidy, producer of a new documentary called The Green Rush. It premiered, I believe, here in Los Angeles on October 12th of this uh, year. Um, he had a big rollout, an official uh, party, the whole nine. If you want to know more about the movie, you definitely want to stay tuned for the inside scoop today on the Marijuologist, The Green Rush. But if you just want to get up to speed and find out what it is we're going to be talking about with Casey Cassidy today, go to his website at www.greenrushmovie.com. Again, greenrushmovie.com, The Green Rush. We're going to be having him live in the studio with us here on our global forum of the marijuologist now as we patiently await the arrival of professor ness for his segment called marijuology 101 i think i hear him in the green room about to come in i wanted to take up a a little conversation that we had um amongst ourselves with a gentleman who i personally feel called us out on facebook now i'm not sure if he directed this to us or whether he directed this to some other show I, I don't get it, but it was posted on our Marijuologist Facebook page, and it says from Ray Crystal, Sorry, guys, I've li- listened enough. Your show is horrible. All anti-19 unless you put leap on your show. They are a 100 times better than you, brothers. Adios. So I guess we lost a listener in this guy? I don't know. Ray, um, I'm not sure if you directed that uh, to us here at the Marijuologist, but if you did, I encourage you to give us a call, 323 323- Two four seven seven four four three. Again, the number for Ray or anyone else who shares that perspective. Give us a call. Three two three two four seven seven four four three. He says I show us horrible. I take that personally because I think what we do is try to be as unbiased as possible. Honestly, I don't know where to weigh in on this whole Prop nineteen thing. We've had all different viewpoints about this whole tax and regulate legalization aspect of cannabis here. I don't even understand why we're even addressing this conversation or this this issue or, or even voting on it when I thought 215 cleared the way for safe and legal access to medicinal cannabis. But I understand this tax and regulate initiative will, in fact, allow people who aren't medicinal cannabis users to avail themselves of cannabis safely and legally. I don't see anything wrong with that. 
But there's so many traps and loopholes, apparently, in this new initiative, in this new ballot measure. I guess I just don't see the whole thing. Again, let me move to our guest who joins us on the mic. Without further ado, he's been very, very patient, has been very, very uh, sparse in his words. But we're going to get him uh, to talk in here on the mic today. He is the producer of a brand new documentary called The Green Rush, greenrushmovie.com. It's a website. Go check it out. Um, welcome, Casey, back to the studio. It's really great to be here. I couldn't think of a better way to spend a Saturday. It's always a lot of fun here, man. I'll tell you, LA Talk Live, real cool place. And uh, the Mara Wallace just uh, always brings out some really great folks, very intelligent. Um, these are not potheads or weed heads or dope heads, lazy layabouts. They're very creative, very productive. We've got one live in the studio, some mystery guests in the green room. We'll talk to them later, but right now it's all about you, Casey. Right on. Yeah, a lot right of on. passionate people here. I, right. I, my right. second time back, and everybody's so cool. Well, Two welcome, different man. shows, too. You came in on the D-Brack show, the rap project yep. with the rap connoisseur, D-Brack's, every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Talk about your movie. He broke the story here first for L.A. Talk Live. We were so enthralled by what you talked about, we wanted to have you back. Uh, for a very appropriate show. Yeah, this, uh, this little, topic, little different vibe at this show. So I'll watch my mouth. <laughs> uh, you don't have to. We say what we want yeah. on this station. Uh, this is, in fact, independent radio. Yep. We are free to speak our minds. It's one of the beauties of in independent Internet-based radio. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're better than those big boys who do FM and AM, and then they're on the Internet because they're still FCC-regulated, bottom line. Right. We are not, yeah. but we are just as uh, visible and as uh, and coming up the yeah, new studio up, you new guys studio. are moving we want to get into that to the listeners yeah <laughs> uh, hopefully you know, you'll only know the difference in the quality of the sound oh uh, definitely and sure maybe will. even more live guests and stuff but anyway so all that said man welcome back again to the studios and welcome back for this particular show which is the marijuologist we explore uh, the whole cannabis movement thing you did a movie about it a documentary yeah. in fact I feel uh, fiction. really lucky to have um, been able to run into you guys and make this happen in LA you know I'm as a producer out trying to promote it and we have a really hot topic you know everybody's talking about this prop 19 and and uh the initiatives going on in south dakota arizona places that have been wow. so hard against pot forever so mm -hmm. you know i'd like to see it happen more back east i know uh dc i think is on board i think uh, yeah state uh, capital Jersey certainly uh, on board. It's it's going to be uh, they they have low income laws that are going into mm -hmm. DC's marijuana project out there too. So well, that's interesting. I, we need to hear from folks from DC. You know, y'all need to tell us what's going on out there because the fact of the matter is, um, right now, the notion that DC and for those of you who may not know the area, Baltimore, uh, that whole Capitol Hill area just outside of it, is in fact an absolute ghetto. I mean, drugs, crime is rampant, uh, you name it. Isn't it some of the highest crime rates? Yeah, exactly. It's there. And that's not a diss to that region of the country. We love you because I'm going to tell you, man, D.C., they hit them very hard, as evidenced <laughs> by some of the uh, documentaries and movies, in fact, on HBO <laughs> that covered The Corner. Right, and then The Wire. The, the Wire, as well, was the latest Based one. Based off yeah. of that area. I think the first one was The Corner. So Baltimore is hit hard by the drug uh, epidemic. And to the whole thing with the alarming statistics behind young African American men who are busted for minor drug uh, possession and put away and thrown away as uh, eloquently stated by Diane Goldstein in that area it's even you more know, pronounced that's why uh, the NAACP is also for Prop 19 you know that was a big thing at the beginning of this when the first polling came out in July um, and it, it's it reflects in those areas, especially when it's a high minority population, and um, the highest arrest rates also anywhere near there. Yeah, and and you know what? I, I don't want to take the shine away from your great film. I haven't finished watching it yet, but man, it's it's hell of out there. But all this from what Diane was talking about, leap law enforcement against prohibition. Diane Goldstein, uh, retired uh, lieutenant commander, but. All this about the methamphetamine epidemic and the, the crooked cops and how they're just enforcing this and then the world of robots and all this other crap, synthetic drugs, just reminds me of Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> the well, super it, expensive cars mm, that mm -hmm. get two miles to the gallon. Mm. 
there that may be the ultimate outcome uh, if we continue prohibition is uh, r- RoboCop <laughs> lifestyle. <laughs> As, as 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 lighthearted and funny as that may seem, uh, you know, it, it 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 impresses me, you know, because I used to look at all these futuristic movies. They were the hottest movies at the time, and uh, you kind of seeing some of this now. I mean, you, you're the, seeing some of the weird stuff that you would see in those crazy movies. The new yeah. helicopters that LAPD bought this year are amazing uh, aeronautical machines. Uh, uh, yeah, right. they got new helicopters. That's something I wanted to bring up along. Um, Diane Goldstein's topic, you know, uh, we, while shooting the film, had to battle against camp, the campaign against marijuana planting. The choppers. Yeah, she said uh, 47000 per prisoner. I bet you they spend 50000 a day in fuel on those choppers that fly, you know, pretty much all of August, September, October. And it's... it's Daily? Another, well, they're out uh, looking for government patrol. Land. Yeah, they're on government land looking for big mafia growth. That's supposed to be, yeah. you know, their main priority. So they're looking for people growing on government land who are usually polluting rivers. You yeah, know, that's the main anyway. thing. Anyway, all right. So listen, we're we're getting ahead of ourselves. It seems to me. Uh, let's get back. This is Casey Cassidy. He joins us live on the mic in the studios of LA Talk Live. This is the Marijologist. I'm your host, Richard Carr. Professor Ness joins me on the mic, and he's got this new documentary out called The Green Rush. First of all, let's start off. How'd you get? into the movie game um i i've been uh in la about 10 years now um and started my career off in the news before i came here and got into reality tv nice. so kind of you know with my live news background and then reality tv kind of a natural documentarian i kind of okay. see the world as it was live tv i guess mm-hmm. is the best way to explain <laughs> it um and through my friends and networking out here in LA, uh, I get hired on projects as a director of photography. Uh, the director, Jason Edwards, brought me on to his first documentary uh, back in 2005, which was an, a nationwide tour giving away uh, custom built motorcycles to veterans. Uh, it's called I love the that. Blood, Sweat, and Gears Tour uh, with Billy I love Lane. That. Mm. And while we were in Sturgis, which was one of the stops on the Blood, Sweat, and Gears Tour, uh, we met somebody who had seen us across the country at all these other bike rallies and said, I love what you guys are doing for the biker community. Uh, I got a lifestyle you might be interested in. And we were introduced to some longtime growers up in uh, Northern California that wanted to show, <clears throat> you know, it was Jason's vision to, to show the lifestyle of these people. And that's what it is, the lifestyle piece. You get intimate details on how different farms uh go through april to october growing outdoor and having that you know kind of stay under the radar from everyone else to make sure that that crop comes through and then they provide that to cooperatives and are not protected you know they can't take it on the road so it's a really powerful uh glimpse into how it's grown and what is involved in outdoor growing. And you, you see uh, one of our characters, it's like their first time, a couple of young guys that you know, don't really know all the ropes. Mm-hmm. Um, we have one gentleman that hires migrant farm workers to help tend his crops. And uh, we have a family, which is a husband, wife, and two kids that grow. Hmm. The firemen, right? Uh, yeah, if you want to call yeah, okay. Mr. Blue, they're yeah. all identified by bandanas. We right. wanted to conceal their face right. yeah. and their locations. Green yeah. Rush. How did you come up with the name of the movie? What's the rush part about is what I'm asking. Well, uh, that was a term that the growers were using. When we started the process of shooting this, um, the pilot process, uh, we were calling it the Pot Chronicles or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And through That's our, corny. <laughs> through our, but it's just, you know, it's a working title. It's all good. Quote, yeah. <laughs> and um, th- uh, one of the growers on our second trip up there said it's the Green Rush, mm-hmm. like the mm-hmm. California Gold Rush, sure. which al- also was in the mountains of Northern California, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so some, something good coming up out of the ground. There's something in them hills, boy, I tell yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this time of year it's so beautiful because it's also wine country. And you know that's what I mean. I mean, it's more than just pot. It's or uh, cannabis mar- grows. It's all kinds of stuff that grows in those hills. I mean, there's gold there. I mean, this perfect. This is conditions. an incredible state. I come from yeah. back east, and I uh, grew up on the east coast. And 
just sometimes being out here looking at the beautiful mountain ranges that you'll see just driving through the hood it's just amazing man it's incredible view you could be in south central and just see the most incredible snow-capped view from the distance it's incredible out here but those hills and the hills of northern california i mean we're talking about this great state and right. all of its you this know, diverse wealth yeah. mineral you know and otherwise well you know they chose los angeles for hollywood because you have the beach the desert the mountains hmm. snow you have all that and unlimited light so it's mm -hmm. a perfect place wow i did not know that perfect place to make films right. so the green rush and uh, so you are chronicling the live uh, lives of growers which i think is you know an important story because it's it's no it's not unlike chronicling the lives of um you know orange growers uh you know or let's say organic orange growers people who are growing independently and avoiding the you know the big institutions of food and trying to get good clean natural wholesome food back into the food chain through their own humble means so yeah, I'd, I'd watch cannabis, an orange. Yeah. I'd watch an orange documentary. Yeah, why not? You know, uh, I any mean, kind of farmers. I'm, I'm independent from, farmers is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm from uh, Walla Walla, Washington area, <laughs> um, right, a small town that. called Dayton in Columbia mm -hmm. County, and they're known for their white winter wheat. You know, mm -hmm. It's exported mm -hmm. mainly to Asian com uh, countries for cracker and noodle production. Mm. Um, but if they could grow hemp up there, it would change the dynamic of how the soil revitalizes itself. Let's talk about that. I mean, let's transition to that because even Diane Goldstein herself talked about the hemp aspect and, and But that and the just wealth. wouldn't be here, yeah. though. That would be throughout the whole country. Yeah, that it'd has be, to be everywhere that could grow any kind. If you can grow cabbage, you can grow hemp. I mean, and, that, and, and it takes way less water. And the thing oh, about yeah. replenishing the earth. And it's more nutritious. I don't think that's ever elaborated on enough here. In, all, in the entire year or so we've been doing this show, I've heard it said often, Explain that. Elaborate on that a little bit. How growing hemp can bring back dead earth, yeah, more or less, right? Right. Well, um, the green rush is also online as kind of the rush towards cleaner energy, right? So our, our title is referring Double to entendre. marijuana. <laughs> exactly. And um, I like the that. two go hand in hand, I think. They sure do. Green hemp, cannabis, marijuana production is cleaner energy mm -hmm, production mm -hmm. it, it's going to put more oxygen into the air before you harvest it so um the fact that you can make oil out of hemp is and it's more efficient than corn it just hasn't been done here in 70 years because the hemp plant you could smoke or some kid stole and <laughs> did smoke and his parents <laughs> called a pot and that's why that's it, why we can't grow this perfect plant casey you're talking about taking money away from al gore with his carbon tax and his cap and trade, which now has suckered the whole country and the world, and now has really hurt our economies. I'm not an Al Gore fan. His uh, <laughs> um, his um, inconvenient his, lie. His, <laughs> I actually have not even seen that documentary, but his policies on private land use in uh, my area of the world, where my family lives, like his laws would make it so that people couldn't even ride motorcycles on their own land if it was adjacent to federal land. So. That's that's very dangerous, and pe people don't really realize that. So I guess we were better under Bush <laughs> than we were under him. But it was a tough choice, as it always is. You know, thank God for this uh, last guy. I honestly believe President Obama's the best thing that's happened to America. I would put him in category with Abe Lincoln. Yeah, uh, that's a big change. Well, and it makes me nervous that his drug policy or his people's drug policy is not really responding to what's going on out here in California. Um, I don't know if he's afraid of being uh, the brother that legalized weed, you know, but that's really not up to him. It's up to the American people. It sure is. It's the, up to all of us. The voters that put him there. Um, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, one of the things about this, this uh, tax and regulate thing that people are saying, you know, it, it doesn't include industrialized hemp. People want to only grow 25 square feet or 25 uh, feet of... Uh, hemp and you think prop 19 is going to hinder this jack herrera initiative. 2012 initiative well, it's not the jack herrera initiative it's right. actually the california cannabis hemp and health initiative of 2012 it was drafted up by jack herrera okay so by by this movement if uh the the gentleman i won't, I won't give out any names because people already know who drafted prop 19 mm -hmm. you know people are voting yes for it so they should know who's who did it right right but if these people put this in at the last minute and it got passed, why didn't they put this in here? The hemp? The hemp initiative. 
the cannabis and hemp. Boom, throw it in all at once. It Why just marijuana? Well, uh, I per, mean, if, per if, code change, I believe there's a um, signature quantity required. Yeah, so if they were short signatures, I, I, you know, I wish I was more. I'd love to be a politician someday. I don't, I don't know. You know if, I don't know. I don't like being one of them leeches. Many of them leeches, man. Right, but 2012... I, I think 2012 is just too long for people to wait. It's a long time. It's yeah. been a long two years already, and to have to go through a whole nother year, the same drug policy, shutting down more dispensaries in Los Angeles. You know, we had a thousand here at one. There point. aren't any more dispensaries, <laughs> right? They're very limited now. But right, see, that's because, because the because LA City Council completely failed us. They completely failed us, and they eliminated five thousand jobs. And as uh, Rich and I were talking a little earlier. Um, the leases that that they, they were lost, all the landlords who suffered. Yeah, mm-hmm. after the real estate bubble burst. Well, and the and only way leased in the same time. The only way they the dispensaries were able to operate under the code a year ago was that they had to use existing structures and couldn't modify any buildings themselves for dispensary. So they were forced into getting certain buildings, and then they took those away. And yeah, the leases lost and the jobs lost. That job, was, oh, it was five to ten thousand jobs. Re- well, that's easily. why it's so bad right here in California. There, you know, there have been, in my opinion, a series of massive blunders economically that the city, in particular, has made uh, decision-wise, especially as it relates to cannabis. You know, you had all these productive businesses. There were some bad ones. And it just seems to me that the city just should have exercised a little more intelligence, uh, both, uh, you know, even from a police perspective, to figure out the good from the bad and let the good stay and let the bad go. What a productive economy we had. And they were self-regulated already. All this tax and regulate, you were supposed to be taxed with the purchase anyway, and it was built into the purchase. And regulation-wise, non-profit. Regulation-wise, there was no epidemic or rash of bad weed. You know, that I recall, at least not since I've been a patient. Oh, my God, there's a rash of bad cannabis out in the valley. Don't go out there and buy. Yeah, that, that, that will man. never happen in Los see, Angeles. See, it, and all that is in here, see, because it, this is all pretty much that and more and benefit for everybody and the industrialization of America. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, damn, damn um, Northern Lights. But um, either way, what, what you were saying earlier about Monsanto and things like that, of course, is a huge, huge point about the farming of any of this hemp or cannabis. I mean, I'm sure there's different strains of hemp also that they're looking to. They're, they're done. Copyright. They're done already. They're well, up so, in Canada. Okay. So now people 21 and over, if Prop 19 were to pass next week can grow their own how does monsanto regulate somebody growing five plants and coming up with their own strains of 70 percent and reading you know the well, grow bibles and information that's out there that's to come that's to come that's instituted in there i mean they're not so, telling us how, who's going to come and regulate and inspect the five by fives either who's going to come and inspect that you are regu- you're abiding by the five by five square limit in your home well, That's there won't like be any regulators. Is my is my position on that? There has to. Well, well no, this, the city and county will have to decide on that, and that's why Prop 19 is so rad because it's wide open and it comes down to a community vote. You know what this sounds to? It sounds to me like the Tax Act of 37. You could grow if you pay the tax and you buy the stamp. Actually, but we're not going to make any. Have, have you? I, I I did some research uh, last week, and those stamps are still available in every state in the United States. If you if you want to go get a marijuana tax stamp, you can actually get it at the county courthouse mm-hmm. in every state in America, um, and you can go get. Uh, you know, it varies from three dollars and fifty cents per ounce to two hundred dollars an ounce. And you can go get a stamp, and if you put that on your drugs, if you put that on your bag, the tax stamp, you're supposed to have paid your your fee to the state. So you you know they can't the state can't come after you. <laughs> a lot of people don't know that. Like that that tax act of thirty seven still exists. You can go get tax stamps for three fifty three dollars fifty cents an ounce if you put the stamp. Like I guess you lick it and put it on the bag. Or something. <laughs> Uh, which I, I guarantee you, if you went in and asked for one, you wouldn't be able to get one in L.A. The system's so back. Let's well, try it. One Let's of the try it. That I, to, I, that I would that, love that. to encourage anyone listening to this to go to their county courthouse and ask for a one-ounce county 
I'm sorry, state, state, mar- oh, state, state issued. It's a state attack, issued. Yeah. Yep, I, and I believe it's three fifty in most states, but there are a few like Nevada. I think it's a thousand dollars. And if you well, <laughs> the funny thing about the stamp, also one more thing, uh, if you don't pay the stamp and it says on the stamp that you are uh, punishable by twice the cost of the stamp. So does that make sense? Like you can buy the I'm stamp totally for three fifty, you lick it and you put it on your bag. But if you don't buy the stamp and put it on there, then they can charge you seven dollars. <laughs> well, yeah, okay. that's that's what the American tax stamp, and it still exists it, because it, it became every state in America. The, the tax stamp came in, and then uh, Timothy Leary overturned it, and then it became legal because they made it. They made the stamp, but it wasn't accessible right. until Timothy Leary fought it in '67 and won. And, and then it became back legal, and I didn't, I didn't understand it until oh, you're wow. explaining if, if how. You look up, Let's if take you a look break, fellas. <laughs> yeah, pick this up after the it. break. This is the marijuologist. Jackson. We're in a heated debate here. Not even heated. A gentleman's debate here. Yes or no is what I'm asking on Prop 19. We'll be back after I the break. Tax it, bro. Tax, tax it. it, man. I'm tired of that. Anyway, we'll be back after the break to debate it some more. Don't go away. This is the marijuologist. We'll be right back. Yeah, man. Like we do every Saturday. Positive vibrations here in the studios of LA Talk Live. Yeah. Where it's more than just talk. <laughs> That's my fake Jamaican accent. And I'm the host of the Marijuologist, Richard Carr, joined each and every week by my esteemed colleague, the inquisitive Mendel like Professor Ness. And this is the show where we explore the social, the political, the economic, and medicinal impact of cannabis. We've also expanded our perspective to encompass the notion of complete legalization as um, assisted by the esteemed members of law enforcement against prohibition Uh, we were joined today by Miss Diane Goldstein I want to thank her so graciously again because this is Saturday Uh, people have other commitments and things that they do but they take time out to join us here on our global forum Uh, heard in over 150 countries the Marawatches once again I'm your host Richard Carr We've got some folks live in the studio with us. We've also got folks calling us, holding on the line. So we're going to swing to that call, and I think I already know who it is. Uh, This should be my good friend, Tyler Green of RTG Cell, ready to grow cool, efficient lighting. Tyler, is that you, and can you hear me? Is there something I did, or can you not hear me? All right, I don't know what happened with that call. I'm going to have to see what what we've got going on with that. Looks like it's fine. I don't know why they can't hear me, but let's see. Let's try it again. Hold on. Can you hear us? All right, so we'll end that call. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. We've got in our studio with us today the producer for the Green Rush, the Green Rush Movie, dot com, and he is Casey Cassidy, who chronicled the behind the scenes lives of uh, medical or let's say cannabis growers some who were in um, bandanas to disguise their identity because their lives depended on their ability to grow cannabis for income and it speaks to the broader issue of cannabis again we've expanded our viewpoint here on the show to encompass not just legalizing medicinal use for cannabis but also legalizing uh, adult responsible use the growth of of cannabis and hemp all of those things so once again let's get back to the show this is the marijuologist uh, each and every saturday from noon till two we like to call it high noon here in the west i don't know what i've done quite here on the board professor ness but somehow i'm not getting my calls high noon what yeah let's see i don't Sabotage. know what happened here yeah, i don't know there we go. There you go. No. Got it. Can you hear us, caller? Hello. Yeah, okay. Well, what are you waiting on? Who's that, Tyler? Hi, Richard. <laughs> Tyler, we couldn't hear you the first time I tried to bring you in. I recognize your number by now. So what happened that first time? Yeah, I, I, I couldn't hear you guys on the line. Um, right. I heard the thing, and I turned it down, and it was just silent. Telephonic oh, um, um, challenges. Uh, this is the Internet. It is live radio. But that's great that we got you on the phone. You're calling us 
anyway from a remote location. You're not like just down the block or around the corner, I don't think. You do a lot of traveling, and you call in each week with a unique perspective yourself. We, ha- I have the highest regard for you because you're not just a medical cannabis patient and an advocate, but you also uh, have a unique product that helps people empower themselves to grow their own uh, cannabis or med- medicines of, uh, of various type in the forms of herbs and things like that, grow your own spices. Uh, that is RTG Cell, ready to grow cool, efficient lighting. Uh, Tyler, though, I know what you're going to say about Prop 19. You know, I've been baffled by all the doublespeak and, you know, the pundits and the political mumble jumbo and the ends. Uh, you know, I'm just confused. But I think Miss Diane Goldstein helped me understand it a little bit better because in my gut and in my soul, I feel it's at least a step in the right direction. I, I, I dismiss the notion that they're going to be this Gestapo styled. Uh, inspectors who are going to raid people's houses and see if you're growing a non-infected cannabis any more than you can grow anything at home. And there are lots of growers who are growing at home any damn way, and they don't even have the manpower or the ability to 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 form a Gestapo-style raids on them. Not enough. And 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 even mm-hmm. even prominent members of Leap and and the law enforcement community from all over the country are, are basically you know saying to us each time they come on our show, we admit defeat to this war. Let's just switch this into another mode. Well, there's going to come this portion, perhaps in or time in the future, in our history where we'll look back on this and say how ridiculous it was because we'll take on. Uh, an approach and a model like that of these other foreign countries where they have legalized other drugs and people know where to go to responsibly as adults, you know, avail themselves of their drug of choice. And that may happen in this country. I think it will because of the people of this country, although there are a lot of sheeple, there's a 40 to nearly 50% at times uh, mass of Americans who think the right way. So I, I it just occurs to me that legalizing or aka taxing and regulating I, and I'm no more with it than than you guys are but at least it's a step in the right direction because at least it, it clears the way for these local municipalities to know what to do it seems now again I haven't read the bill so you you're going to get on me about this I just <laughs> loaded you up with a gun full of bullets go ahead fire away uh, okay Richard well I, I think it's not a step in the right direction for a couple reasons the first of those is you say that it, you said AKA tax and regulate. Well, it's not total legalization. And to say people would rather have taxes is not is to make poverty their choice. And to say that they would rather save to a system, it's poorly written. We all can agree that it's poorly written. It's nowhere near the quality of legislation that Jack Harris, um, the compassionate um, hemp initiative of 2012, very well written. This is poorly written. It has loopholes and stipulations. When we partially deregulate things, it leaves open doors for the wolves to come in and take control. Yeah, we might make a lot of money for a little while, and it might look great, but what happened with Enron when we partially deregulated the electrical grid? Let a lot of people make some profit, and when they didn't meet the bottom line, they turned it off. And so we have to have total legalization and decontrol of cannabis before we can start. We already, like you've said earlier in the show, we're already making tax money off of it. When uh, we get it at the dispensary and you buy uh, grow lights or nutrients, you know, what we need to do is allow people to sell it in a marketplace, and that will in further increase jobs and revenue. Uh, th- for a couple people, but for everyone. Uh, the other big reason is racism, and I think if we're still crossing out the word marijuana on our legislation, we haven't gotten to the core of prohibition, which in 1937, um, we got to remember, they tried to prohibit it a lot of times. In 1914, the Harrison Act tried to control cannabis based on medical and failed. They had to go to racism and divide people up into groups in order to control them, and cannabis doesn't do that. It brings everybody together. And now that people are really learning some of the meat behind this thing, we also have 1449, which uh, is effectively decriminalized and um, a $100 fine. Ed Rosenthal recently posted on his blog that he was arrested and was going to plead not guilty so he could go to a jury trial, I believe, as the story goes. Um, 
and they dropped the case because an ounce is now all of a sudden because what Arnold did, we know that we're not going to clog up the court system. So there's no reason for people that are just concerned about that adult responsible use to trade their rights and say, I say, even though it's still slavery, you've got some of these people that don't have their medical recommendation in California, which um, it's very, because we've proven that any condition, a lot of conditions can benefit from cannabis use. And the ones that can't could benefit from the industrial use of cannabis by cannabis, um, uh, cannabis sales that got us over here in the first place or ropes or a car Model T was designed to be made out of hemp and run on hemp. We can get back to that if we let the, everyone, not just a group of people, but let everyone have use and be able to use it and help it benefit their lives. And I just don't think that it's a step in the right direction. It's not a long time to wait either. Having because we have medical cannabis and we need to focus on getting our rights, getting the dispensaries open back up. Not hey, creating a whole new system of a de- uh, that could be a real debacle for law enforcement. Hey, Tyler, look, can we interject? We've got a studio guest we'd like to have weigh in on this, and I'd like to introduce you, mm-hmm. gentlemen. This is Casey Cassidy, Tyler Green. Hi, Tyler. Um, Hi. Nice uh, movie. Sounds great. Can't wait to see it. Thank you. Thank you very much. I hope you get a chance to check it out on Hulu. Um, <laughs> uh, what What you're saying um, makes a lot of sense, and I think is a great argument. And having just recently read the um, initiative for 2012 written by Jack Hera um, I think the best point uh, of many is that it'll turn it from law enforcement over to the health department right that's how I understand it Correct. Uh, similar to what is on uh, Hawaii's agenda uh, Hawaii was the first state to offer that up, that it is no longer a law enforcement issue, but it's a health department issue. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I don't know how that policy changes, but how sweet would that be to just pass it off and say, um, this pot thing is no longer regulated or taxed um, with money going to law enforcement, but it's going to be put upon the health department to decide how to use it. And And that would actually be millions upon millions upon millions of dollars that are going to be coming into the city and staying within the city for the city to help the city and the citizens of the city in the failing economy where everything is going to China, everything's going to India, everything's being exported. We have these ladies here saying, vote for me, vote for me. I sent the most jobs overseas. No, I did. Hey, look, I cut more jobs than you did. And Terrible. I'm going to hire more cops than you are. And listen, I'm going to... It's like, wait a minute. What the heck are what nightmare are we in? Am I watching the Twilight Zone, The Outer Limits? What is really going on here? The the open end literature in Prop 19 though would allow for city and county governments to switch that from law enforcement to health, right? Well, Prop 19? Yeah. Well, that's the that's the whole problem is the 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 will of the vote. This is supposed to be for the people by the people. So why are we just going to vote something into law without any clear regulation? Well, any regulations or anything, but it specifies we have clear-cut protection for medical cannabis, which, which will have to be established uh, at the ci- it'll have to be established at the city and county level, as I read it. Um, the state will no longer aid the DEA in the prosecution of cannabis users, patients, growers, and the cities and counties of California are going to have to decide how they're going to tax and regulate cannabis. But even Eric Holder, Eric Holder, already came out saying, "Hey." If this thing goes through, we're, we're going back into full force, DEA status, back with, for marijuana. But with no longer the help of the California State Patrol, CHIPS won't be involved with wasting their resources on, on it. I mean, we're only that's, talking about under an ounce, though. Right. Of yeah. course, yeah. I mean, you're still screwed if you got 10 pounds in the trunk. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it, exactly. it will be so a new Where's it going to come from? It's got to come from but if, somebody, somewhere. If the tax has been paid on it and you have that receipt when you get pulled over, I mean, I think that's what is most interesting to me is that yeah. if you pay your tax on it, then you have receipt and the state isn't going to, they're not going to shoot themselves in the foot trying to bust people that just paid the taxes on it. Well, it's a, it's a, they're already not busting people on for under an ounce. Can I sure. weigh in yeah. on this issue, guys, a, a bit? And, and why I think it's a move in the right direction. 
as flawed mm-hmm. as it is. Um, growing up as a black man, a child in the 60s, I remember all of the stuff that was going on on the news. And remember, this is black and white news, only about three to seven to eight channels. There was no cable TV, none of that stuff. Uh, you had to be wealthy just to have satellite TV, and it wasn't much on that. But all the news coverage of Martin Luther King and the civil rights struggles, all the battles. Now, you know, rem- remembering I'm a child in the 60s, so all I see is water hoses and dogs and people being beat with batons. You know, just everything just short of shooting them down like dogs. But this was part of the civil rights movement. Now, some of the laws that came about as a result of that struggle were very flawed. The first laws, very flawed. Some of the votes that black people had to cast for white candidates, they knew were flawed would not be the best representative for their interests and needs, but still they cast the vote that would change at least, you know, public policy or government or state policy on how they were treated at the community level, at the city levels. I'm talking about folks just wanting to vote, wanting to eat in the same restaurants and what have you. So my point being, some of the first civil rights laws, civil rights laws, were very flawed. Some of the very first candidates and 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 activists and proponents for civil rights laws weren't the best choices so what i see in this cannabis freedom movement what i would call it here today is the same baby steps and i think that those steps that some might see as being in the right direction flawed though they may be will in fact become improved just by you know this you know baby step it's and that's what makes it a step in the right direction that it, it will at least improve and change to some greater or lesser degree people's awareness of cannabis imagine what the world will say if law if california does pass prop 19 the world is going to have to use the word cannabis in their vo- daily vocabulary more you'll hear the word marijuana more and this racist thing about the word marijuana I've always had some exception to that because the n-word is portrayed that way and yet the n-word is as meaningless to powerful black people as is the word marijuana is to powerful cannabis users and I'm one of both they understand it. so my point being <laughs> that the fact of the matter is in the end man this is a step in the right direction in my humble belief and maybe I agree with uh, and, and found clarity in my own perspective through Diane Goldstein today because she's a woman and she remembers how oppressive it was just to get the right to vote to step out of the kitchen you know serving men and go into positions where after 20 years or during 20 years go from a foot cop to a lieutenant commander in Redondo Beach in California so the fact of the matter is all, a lot of new laws a lot of new initiatives, a lot of new freedom initiatives are flawed. They're going to be, as we struggle our own way through this muck and mire of what is right about cannabis and what is wrong about it. I think I might have hung up. Telephone. <laughs> but, my, no, I'm sorry about that. My point being that, uh, and I'm done with my rant, I just want to say, I think it's a step in the right direction, flawed though it is, because most of those early uh, monumental moments in human clarity were steps in the right direction, uh, cloudy though they may be. What say you? I think it's just not, it's not clear enough. You know, if we settle for nothing now, then we're settling for nothing later. That's and not just, true. And we're not big, true. We've brought it to not the true. stage. I voted, already- I voted from the age of 18, and that's over 30 years in this country, and m- virtually every time I cast my vote, it never changed my life until I cast my vote for Barack Obama. Hallelujah. You, 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 you can't tell me, man, that struggling and, uh, you know, listen, you have to keep trying. You have to keep trying. I mean, listen, the notion that doing the same thing over and over again is insanity, well, then most people who stick to it and have the tenacity to see it through must be insane. And most people who are great thinkers are considered to be insane. Because the fact of the matter is, if black folks had given up and tried something different and we tried everything, then we wouldn't have the freedoms we had today. Is all I'm saying to you, Tyler, is that, you know, 
this is going to be flawed. And if you understand what real, what real civil strife and struggle is about from a visceral level, having lived through it, I'm not saying you haven't, because you have. You're in the medical cannabis movement. You're in the cannabis movement. So you've got to understand. But as an older person who's seen the other side of that struggle and the victors come out on the other end, a man once arrested and 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 and, consi- and, and investigated and followed and and su- uh, surveilled on by the FBI, who was you know you know whose character was you know decimated by uh, uh, J. Edgar Hoover, uh, Martin Luther King, whose birthday we celebrate now. We're gonna celebrate the birthday of Jack Harrow one day on a national level. We have to be patient. That's all we got to do. That's we all have I to suggest. Be vigilant and continue to. Like Martin Luther King said, obey just laws as responsible citizens and disobey the unjust laws. I think that Prop 19... We ain't doing that now. As much, as much weed is pushing through L.A. <laughs> All the weed pushing through L.A. I don't think a whole lot of people is obeying some unjust laws. There's plenty of weed flowing exactly. through Los Angeles and all throughout the country. The government and let Obama, who we petitioned on Change.org and Change.gov, do what he's going to do and legalize it on a national level. We're going to repeal the Harrison Act tax cannabis 1937 the narco act and every other act that makes cannabis uh illegal and divides people up we're going to have the young man i say be patient because it will come in time be patient it's coming this is part of the struggle brother i'm telling you man i've been on the planet long enough to know and i'm not you know condescending i'm just saying really this is part of the struggle this is where it begins the flawed laws that get the doors open and then the next thing you know you're voting for your first cannabis president a, a president who openly smokes yeah. cannabis in the White House. I people already did that. <laughs> Start printing money. Sure they do. Yeah. Start but openly, I said. No, you got to remember Clinton didn't inhale. He, he was a cocaine president. How Bill about, Cocaine Clinton. Remember Obama. that. How about the president <laughs> that's that on the, the, the new uh, $1 bill, the new hemp $1 bill? Oh. You about the president. Well, I guess you can't take Come the one, man. Away. Make it Listen, $3. So, though. you know, this is, it, it's going to change, brother, is all I'm That'd saying. And that's why I'm 419, because it is a step in the right direction. Hey, man, I come from the East Coast. My first legal purchase in over 50-some years of uh, – no, that's not – that's true. 30 years, I was going to say. 30 <laughs> years of being on the planet. <laughs> watch out. Watch out. After all this time on no, the planet, my first, legal, my first legal purchase of cannabis, right, was in California about a year ago, just over a year ago. Now, I've never been busted for drugs. Never. And I grew up in the inner city. I'm, I was on the, the hit list by all the police departments to take me down. But it didn't happen to me. And, and, and most smart brothers of my era knew better. You know, so I, you know, I'm not dissing you young people at all. I know you're younger than me, and I understand your youthful vigor in this battle. But I'm just trying to say I think this is just the beginning of it. And that's what makes it a step in the right direction. And I think anybody who really is kind of pro-cannabis from our era... When in the 60s, cannabis was even more prohibited. And yet, man, how much weed did we smoke in the 60s, baby, and in the 70s? But it wasn't the same weed that's out today. That don't matter. So yes, why are we is. inviting in more control for something that you're saying has already become well, more free? You know, I just am saying yeah. that we're trading off a little bit of freedom for a, a lot of better control. Taxation. The people have put a lot of money into without this advertised. Representation, representation is tyranny. Is right? Tyranny. Right. So now, taxation without representation exactly. is tyranny. Now, if they tax cannabis, there is no guesswork that the representation for which they are taxing it will be there. Why would they tax cannabis? Well, if we, if they tax cannabis and we don't see roads getting better and schools being built and libraries and more ed, uh, money invested in education and not in incarceration, if they tax cannabis, if we give them the chance to tax cannabis. And we don't see that as the result in eight to ten years, and we're patient, and we still don't see any improvement, and we know that they're getting a cut of that money. Come on, man. I'm going to tell you like to say on the weekend on football. Come on, man. (laughs) So, what do you think? They're going to tax it and just keep the tax money and and don't kick anything back? Tax revenue will be generated by the products that cannabis makes and the jobs that it creates. Well, Tyler. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to the words of Tyler Green of RTG Cell, GrowCell.com. Check out our revolutionary new way to grow your your medicines, your spices, your, your anything you could grow under the sun. You could grow it with RTG Cell with cool, efficient lights, without the heat, without the high energy bills. And one of the things that I was showing Casey here of the Green Rush was your grow system and, and your grow indoors because he has been focusing on outdoor grow. 
you know, with all this taxation, there's going to be more taxation on the electricity because more people are going to start growing. Oh, no, you know, not another Enron. After oh, November <laughs> after November 2nd, you know, all these people are going to start using all this electricity. Remember, our energy grids are already bad enough as they are in the summer when everybody's running their air no, conditioning. No, they're not. That was just brokers from Enron. They're actually, I think they're fine. There you go. They were just lying to us, but whatever. And Arnold Schwarzenegger was involved in it, but either way, I can't blame him because he did 114.49, so. I like Arnold. <laughs> oh, oh, I, oh, you like well, the, uh, the I former Nazi now, well. now, do you, <laughs> Now I like the Nazi. <laughs> oh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Look at him, man. He's waving to the people. That's a high Hitler sign. Oh, you like him now, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you talk about his motorcycle, right. the no, sidecar one that he right? Uh, yeah, yeah. No man, Schwarzenegger are, wasn't that you, you bad. Guys was he? Just aren't patient, man. That's all. You aren't patient. I've seen change in this country that you guys haven't experienced. You haven't. No, you know. That's true. I mean, Wait for real, real talk. Jack Harris Initiative. It's coming. That, that's going to be a really long 2011. I mean, how well, how we do we get? Have are moving in the right direction. Look, in Michigan, <laughs> I really think it's going to be an overwhelming landslide um, pass, unfortunately, for a lot of the cooperatives and growers that are established in California right now. It is going to affect your business. i got to ask you, Casey, you, you, you yes or no on 19? I'm yes on 19. Okay, and I right. speak on behalf of myself, um, you know, the mm. other um, producers. Oh, no? Well, no, I, I just speak on my uh, own Ness behalf. is no. I, I am you read neutral? it. I just say read the initiative. I'm yes or no, Ness. Yes or Get no. off the fence, man. Get, Come on. Read the initiative. Come on, I'm man. yes on 19 because I want to see every American home have a uh, marijuana Christmas tree. That's uh, all. Oh, uh, uh, the Charlie Brown, the Charlie <laughs> Brown tree. Yeah, well. and, that, and that's a good reason to be yes on 19. So that's everybody it. can have a, a, a you know, you know cannabis what? tree. I know Ness. we're going into a little bit of overdrive. But yes here. or no? It's so beautiful. I mean, why can't everybody have one their house? People. Let's yes or no, Ness? We're doing this overdrive, ladies and gentlemen. This is at Marihuana Go here on LA Talk Live. Com. This is your host, Professor Ness. Richie Carr, right here, engineering, co-host, yes no. Casey. Is a hey, Tyler, set. you want to hold the line? Let's just get to the break. I'm going to let you finish that. Let's put Tyler on hold. Tyler, you want to fight some more? I want to talk about the, I want to talk about the growth space issue. Ding, 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 ding. We're going to the second round, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned for Tyler Green of RTG right Cell. We'll be right back after this. This is Professor Ness of The Marijuologist with a question for everybody. Are you ready to grow with cool, efficient lighting? RTG Cell is the only sustainable way to grow your own. Stop polluting the earth with outdated grow lighting systems. RTG Cell is the way to grow high quality and bigger yields without the heat or unwanted electric bills. With free information available at growcell.com, you are enabling yourself to grow whatever and whenever you want. RTG Cell is made in the USA and guaranteed from veg to bloom. So visit growcellcel.com to learn how RTG Cell is revolutionizing the way we live and grow today and tomorrow. That's growcell.com. G-R-O-W-C-E-L.com. <laughs> 